Bear with me here. Ah, you good. Welcome everyone, my name is Johan, and I hope you're talking my tempo. If you're new here, drop a sub, drop a like, leave a comment. If you leave a comment with a question, we'll answer it in future podcasts. But without further ado, let's hop straight into it. And I'm here joined with... Avery, or it's Avery, whichever one. I just changed my artist name, so we kind of in the... Like, the, what, I forget the word, but We're transition. Branding. Yeah, rebranding and transitioning stage right now. So I will leave yeah. all his stuff down below, guys. So if you guys want, go drop him a follow. He's pretty cool already. I can tell from talking to him. Yeah. Getting into it though, Avery. Getting What's into up? music. So, okay, getting into music. I'm probably like sophomore, junior, high school. I wasn't really taking it serious. So you're so about my- 15, 16 though. Yeah, probably like 16, 16 ish, maybe 17 around that okay. uh one of my friends his name is ricky wello i don't know if you familiar with him he's an artist in the city too I know. uh you know who midwest is no midwest okay never mind but so okay so ricky makes music so uh he was making music back then and like we were just hooping and stuff like high school and then he just told me how on a song one time just like joking around and i'm like what i'm like i don't make music and then he ended up convincing me to do it and I messed with it. Like, I thought it was fun just, just like, to do. So I should just start making it a little bit more just on my own, just messing around with it. And then, like, like back then, like, well, you feel me? If I, like, I, I, some stuff happened my junior year. I started going through some stuff. So, like, I ain't drink or, like, smoke or anything. So, like, I was just kind of holding it in. But then music, I started, like, letting it out, like, my emotions and being able to, like, kind of vent through my music. And then that's when I really started falling in love with it. And then that's when I just started doing it. And then people was like, hey, you actually, like, decent at it. Like, you need to start dropping. And I started dropping on Apple Music and Spotify and then start going a little bit of a fan base. And then now we're here today. Just start kept, kept getting better and better at it. You started when you were about 16, 17. How old are you now? I'm 19 right now. Oh, you're still pretty young at this, huh? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm 19, so. Okay. Like, I didn't really take it serious until probably last November, around my birthday time. So, like, freshman in college when I really was like, I'm about to really do this. Like, before it was just like a hobby. I was really a football, like, like an athlete, football player, basketball player. But then last year in college, I was like, I could do this. Like, I can really take off with this. I started making connections with bigger rappers and, like, bigger artists, and they was hitting me up. And connecting with them and when they was telling me like hey you hard this and that i'm like oh snap oh yeah okay bet i'm about to do this so yeah it's definitely a different conversation with uh i guess most people that don't know nothing about music uh mm-hmm. because most people they know you just you know <laughs> from experiencing you in the past you know their past memories with you but yeah. when this new thing comes about and you're actually serious about it it's your lifestyle and stuff it's a different mindset when you start tapping into it and you and then you got to like switch gears a little bit talking to them yeah for real because like people now like like i go home and like for like from college and stuff and people look at me as an athlete like everywhere i go like they don't see me like oh yeah he make music well it used to be now it's starting to actually transition like people now are starting to hey nah yeah, he make music. Like now, people introduce me. They say he make music instead of uh, he play football. Like it's starting to. I'm starting to see the transition and stuff. And that just came with like some of the connections I made. Now people in the city is like taking me more serious. I guess just cause like people I've been with now and like got songs with now and stuff like that. So going back to when you were in high school, uh, you s- said you so you played sports in high school, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, and then you started making music in high school. Yeah. So when did it become a point in time to where you were known as the athlete and then to when the music started getting brought into it? Because people that already knew you as an athlete might not see you as a musician, but then yeah. they start bringing the two together. And like. Yeah, that's really – so in high school, like my junior year, when I started making it at first, people ain't really taking me serious. I didn't even take myself serious, if I'm being honest. But then, like, senior year, I dropped, like, a, a 
I wouldn't even say it's an album. I say it's an EP. It's called Feelings to Ashes. It's still on Apple Music and everything. Um, it was it got a song on there called One More Chance that people like, and then Don't Let Go. It's a song. You, you ever heard the song uh, Say You Won't Let Go? Of your songs? No, it's it's a famous song. Uh, who's it sent? Who's it by? I, I can't say I've heard of that song specifically. I bet you. I bet if I like if somebody played it, you it, it's like it's been on the radio a lot and stuff like that. Oh, like, okay, maybe then. But, but you've probably heard it before if you listen to it. But I made a remix to that song, and then a lot of people in my school got attention from that, and they was like, "Oh, it's one of my top songs on uh, Spotify and Apple Music." If you look, it's called "Don't Let Go." So that was really when people started seeing like, okay, he's he's actually decent. Like that's what my friends say. They was like, that's when people started really listening to you and stuff. So then. And around that time, we were, like, playing football. We won state in football, so people was really more focused nice. on sports with me, like, than music, for real, yeah. But then, like, I got end of senior... Right there real fast. Uh, I'm from Logan Sport, so, you know, okay. the Logan Sport football team, uh, no one's really spoke highly of them, so I don't know if you know anything about that at all. We got a player here that went to Logan Sport. I, I don't know his name, but uh, he had Marion right now. He got recruited. He's a linebacker. Uh, I went to my. Okay, so so it's like last year he got recruited or this year? He's a freshman right now, so he oh. just got here. Yeah, there's no way I know. I graduated in 2017. Yeah, you know Mount Vernon is Mount, Mount Vernon High School. Mount Vernon. Mhm. Mm it sounds familiar. Okay, yeah, that's where I went. So yeah, we okay. uh, we was four A for football. So. I know we our was, biggest rivals yeah. were Lafayette Jeff, but Lafayette. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Never, we never played them. No, we're we from different parts down. of the state. Like I'm up here, you're down here right now. Yeah. <laughs> now my dad, uh, my dad was friends with uh, Mr. Skaggs, y'all old basketball coach. Oh, Coach Skaggs. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, that guy. I worked out at. Yeah. I know so his I know, kids. Yeah. I met stuff like that. yeah. He's yeah. A pretty cool guy. But uh, yeah, he's cool. Yeah, that's my one of my dad's friends. Oh. So, yeah, that's probably the only. I guess connection I got with Logan's Port. I guess would be that. I've been up there a few times just to see him. Small world, man. Yeah, for real, it is. So what's uh, so what's Avery doing nowadays, man? Like, what are you? Uh, how are you trying to balance sports and music? Really, right now. So I've been talking to like a few different people because my thing is like I'm trying to learn at this point. Like, I know kind of the basics of everything, but I want to like learn so I can really elevate like more than I am right now. So. I've been trying to like learn like the business part of music more than so like the actual making music. Cause like me personally, like I could go and make a song in like an hour and then be done. So like the making the music process of that, like, I mean, it takes a minute of course, if you want it to be a good product, but like I need, I feel like right now I need to learn like the marketing and like the fan base building and stuff like that. So I've been trying to like learn more of that and like learn like, ways to get my name more out there if that makes sense so like that so that's really what i've been focusing on like right now yeah. and then i got like like i've been making songs and stuff like on the like i haven't dropped in probably a month or two which normally oh, i'll drop slacking, bro. yeah normally i'll be more consistent <laughs> but like i've been really trying like i got kind of co-signed to this artist in the city i don't know if you know rb umrello is uh, uh no i do not you don't okay. He he's probably like the biggest rapper from Indy for real. Uh, if you look him up, so he's like I tapped in with him. Me and him got some songs. I'm gonna be on his next album uh, yeah. called Rage. Uh -huh. And then with but a lot of people don't know that, so that's like a low key thing that I've been keeping under wraps. I got like three, four unreleased songs that I'm ready to drop. I'm like they ready to. I just need cover art, and I'm trying to get a music video for one of them. And I've been like teasing them a little bit, just trying to get people ready. But I've been That's trying to like, figure right out. There. yeah, so I'm trying to get like the marketing right. So when I do drop those, like they go farther than like my past drops. I want to know, okay, get it to this page, get it on this page, get it to this person, put it on here, boom. So it can get like, that's what I'm really trying to focus on right now. I think what will help you out tremendously is, because uh, I, I used to rap, I don't really rap anymore, but I've got a right. few projects of my own. And one thing I did is um, I went to people that were close to me, people that I could trust, which mm -hmm. I'm sure you know a lot of people. 
them of people that you can trust. Because I went to them and I said, hey, I'm going to send you like the whole project, listen to it, and then when I drop it, I'm going to send you a link. If you'd be kind enough to go ahead and just share that link out, promote it for me, you know, a little bit. And I think mm -hmm. that will take, you know, let's say you might get a thousand total on the whole project. If they do that, it might get like, what, six, seven thousand more, you know? Yeah, just because they, yeah. I'll I be trying to do that. Like, I'll send a, like, I'll, I'll spam posts, not posts, but like, I'll post something and then I'll like send the post out to like a whole bunch of people and then like put like repost for me or something like that. So, like, one time, probably the most I've had recently, like, on my, like, you got like a business account on Instagram? Uh, no. Just Where you can one account. See, you don't. Like, you don't have, like, where it say, like, accounts reach this month, like, this amount of accounts oh, reach. Oh, uh, I didn't know, actually, like, business accounts do that. I thought it was, like, that's just how it is. But I guess I do got a business account, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, like, at one time, I had, like, 7.6 accounts reach, like, on average. So I'm trying to get back up to that right there and keep that right there. Because if I got that, like, everything I was posting was getting at least four or 5,000 views on it. And that was unreleased stuff. So when I drop it, I want it to have like uh, 10k or something like that. I'm trying <laughs> to get more visuals too. Like, you gotta have high hopes too. You gotta have like a goal set in mind because if you don't, yeah. you're not gonna look forward to anything. You're not gonna, you know. Yeah. Stand I want up. more, more visuals and stuff like that. Like find, I want to really find like a team. Like I ain't really got like a manager. I've been really doing everything by myself. Like Arby and Rello, he been helping me out a little bit. But like, I want to like have like one dude that makes my cover art. Like. I got I got some producers a little bit, and I see you make beats, so I'm gonna tap in with you too. But I got like a producer that really sends me consistent beats. I got a I don't got to cover our dude. I want to cover our dude, stuff like that. So I ain't got to do it all myself, and it looks more professional. I can get a cover art with me on it. Like, I ain't got one cover art with my face on it. Out, it's all like just words, and just, you know what I mean. So I'm just trying to get more, to get my image up. I guess is what it, uh, I'm trying to say. Get my image more out there. You're trying to build, uh, like you said, you're trying to learn more of the business side of things, right? Yeah, like build a brand. Build my brand build right now. Brand. Yeah, that's what I was going to say next. Yeah, Yeah, that's why I really changed my name, too, because, like, it was It's Avery. And, like, a lot of people, like, yeah, I mean, it was cool, but, like, I feel like just A-V-R-Y, like, be easier to find, easier to, uh, like, I don't know. And I've been kind of getting into, like, the underground sound you know what i mean like uh, uh go into you look, that you, like jace and them like that you listen to uh jace or um who's another underground artist i listen to like sofago yeah, like people I've like heard that of sofago. yeah like sofago jace um i forget that one dude's name but it like just stuff like that like it's different like yeet like yeet type beats like things like that, but like I'm trying to like change it up. Like they get on there. Sometimes somebody might get on like a beat, like like a trippy red beat or something. He might get on there yelling or something like that. Like I'm like if I get like a I get like a crazy beat like that, but then I'll come on there and like flow or like almost harmonize, not singing, but like a little bit of singing, a little rapping, going back and forth and stuff like that. Melodic. It's unreleased right now. Yeah, like some melodic underground create like if you hear it it's like a whole nother sound that it's like that's what me and Arby and Rello do on his album we was talking about like he got uh it's called Rager Life but like he can sing so like we kind of switched up the flow so like it, it, when he drops it you're, I, I'm gonna have to send you the link and everything you can hear it's it's gonna be nice but the name Avery I feel like like that is more in that scene like it's a, I can build a brand around that name easier than the other name i guess and i asked my fans and they was like yeah you should change the name to this so we should see what happens a smart move yeah just trying to <laughs> play the chess pieces right i want to go back happens. to what you said you said that you can make a song in an hour so yeah the beat selection process how's that go? really i gotta feel it like music isn't like a oh yeah it's hard let me just do this. Like, for me, I mean, that, it can be, like, if it's, like, a feature or something. But, like, when I want to make a song myself, I really, I listen to, like, 
10, 15, 20 beats before I probably record. Sometimes I click one and I'll be like, oh, yeah, this is the one. But most of the time it'll take me, sometimes it'll take me a few days. I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes it'll take me a, a few days because I'm constantly thinking the lyrics. Like if I'm riding around or walking around campus, I'll think of a lyric and I'll record myself on Snapchat. Like my memories is just videos of me just saying like a one line and then I'll just save it. And then I'll come back later and I'll have a whole verse just off of like little lines that I said. I do the just same walking around. shit, man. The same shit. Yeah, so like I do stuff like that, and then I'll add into it and like mix it. So if I find a beat and I just hear the beat, and like I can just like it'll like go through my body almost. It's like a weird feeling. Like I just feel it all the way through oh, me. Yeah. I'll be like, yeah, this is one of them ones. And then I'll start recording, and then I'll just flow. But if I get on a beat and I got like I feel like I'm forcing words, like I'm forcing lyrics, I'll just turn the beat off and throw it away. Like I probably got like five, six hundred songs that, and like I got maybe what 20 20 something out and i got like 500 released just because some of them just i started going and then i feel like i forced it and i just stopped throw away i get so, the same yeah. way when i get to making beats man like uh, i don't know where i heard this from but uh it was from somebody that's got like grammys and platinum records and stuff but they said uh discipline like when you start something you gotta be a mm -hmm. man and finish it. Start what you finish. And I yeah. have so many beats. Honestly, most of the beats that rappers pick are ones that I started and I almost gave up on. But I remember what I heard and I was like, I'm gonna just finish it out. And it be the ones they pick. I'm just like, well, yeah, I got some hell? songs. I got some songs like that. I swear to God, like I'll throw them away. And then one day, like, cause I do this a lot too. Sometimes I'll just be bored, like riding around. I just go to my files and just click random like old files like just to see like my progression too really like i want to see like okay i was doing this back then now i'm better at this area this and that and then i'll sometimes go back and i'll be like hold on why did i not finish this <laughs> and then i'll finish it like my most recent song uh toxic love that's what happened with that one that was I, i've had that song since last school year and uh oh, wow. they near last like yeah, last school year, and it was just a throwaway. I, I was going to get a feature on there, and then one, like, recently, I was, over the summer, I was like, I'm about to just finish this myself, and then I finished it and dropped it. So it's just, yeah, it's just a problem. I'm really be having just fun with it, for real. It's like, that's important. It's just, yeah, I feel like when you lose fun, that that's like when you need to, something ain't right. Like, if you're not having fun with it anymore, something's not right. I gotta give a quick pause with the thing real fast. My Zoom just popped up with something. I did not know what it. I'm gonna cut this out, but it said I got like 16 minutes left or something. I don't know what it's talking about. Uh, you. It's probably like. Because I know Instagram Live, you can only go live for like an hour. That might be what it is. It popped up, says like 16 minutes remaining by the upgrade or some stuff like that. I don't know what it was trying to say. But. Um. Because I, I don't want to go out and, you know, like in the middle of this, you know, talking. Yeah, I feel you. Uh, I don't know. But if it goes out, I'll just have to just, I guess, redo the Zoom call or something, I guess. But we'll see. I apologize. Yeah. No, you straight. Why is it? Okay, I think we're back on track. Okay, we're good. Whatever happens, happens. Um, yeah. I'm gonna go in some of my questions I got here for you. Um, let me see what I can ask you. Cause I got a like a like like a for like a whole paper of stuff. I'm just ready to ask you. Yeah, that's that's cool. <sighs> okay, here's a good one for you. So, what do you think a good mindset is to have? Like, uh, does uh, talent beat hard work? Or how do you feel? Because you play sports, so obviously hard work will kind of override talent. But sometimes talent can override hard work at the same time. So, what do you on? Like, you mean opinion? just anything, or like with music? Uh, let's go with music for now. You okay, think someone well, that yeah. can pump out a thousand songs in a year with hard work can be someone that pumps out two hundred with talent, or? See, nowadays, I wouldn't even say it 
it's all about talent anymore because it's some people I know right now that have like crazy amount of streams that's not good. Like I mean they like for they I mean they they're decent. Like everybody's got a different sound. Name one. Or whatever. A person? Name one that's got, you know, all these streams. That's not that good? Nah, I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna uh... put up <laughs> I ain't gonna I ain't gonna put up a class, but like it is some people that's like got a bunch of streams, but that's just cause they know they might know the business part of music. So I feel like if you got like if you work hard at that part and you gain a fan base off of your sound and you able to drop stuff that might not be as good as because it's some like i bet there's people that no one's ever heard of that's probably so hard at music but they just don't know where to drop it at they don't know where like i swear to god last night i was at the gas station or not the gas station oh, yeah i was at the gas station and this dude walked up to me and some of my friends and just start rapping. He was like, I'm the best rapper in the city. Give me a chance. And he started freestyling, beating on his chest, freestyling. And he was hard. Hard as hell. But, I mean, he don't got no resources. Like, he can't go out and, like, he, he's working, I guess, technically, because he's trying to put himself out there. But he don't have, have no songs off of music, like, stuff like that. So The resources like, aren't there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so I feel like talent... I feel like hard work can beat talent in music. I oh, feel yeah. like just because, like, if you cut consistently and then you find out, like, the algorithm, like, the TikTok app and stuff like that, like, if you find out all that and you constantly working hard at it, you cannot be as good as somebody that's really good. But if he don't drop a song in a year and you drop 15, you know what I mean? Y'all, your fan base going to be growing. His going to be declining. So I feel like hard work could beat music out. Like, I've experienced uh, what you just said, actually. Like, uh, I used to be a manager at this uh, Culver's here in my town, and I was a really good manager. I really did everything by the book. I went above and beyond, but none of the higher ups they uh, they weren't around to see it. Right. So even though I, like I might have been better than some of the people that were above me, they weren't there to check it out. Yeah. Yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like. But I feel like if you've got the talent and you do put the work in, like, eventually stuff will start coming around. Or, like, you know what I mean? Like, if you get in front of the right person, you could take off crazy. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. I feel like that, yeah, that's probably how I feel with that. So, yeah. Like, I feel like I could work harder in some aspects when it comes to like marketing like sometimes i'll be slacking like i I, I definitely slack but i just got to get better you know grow every day wise words from avery <laughs> wise words yeah i'll be trying if somebody's always saying they the best at this the best at that they always like they not really you know what i mean you got to realize when you're wrong sometimes sometimes you, you got to there's People that are bigger. There's always someone bigger and better than you. It really is. Yeah. Comes yeah. to sports. Comes uh, I don't know. Well, everything. Uh, I play poker. But I always so got someone keep... better than me. Yeah, I don't even know how to play poker. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to play. Yeah. I want to get into but something yeah. real quick. What separates? Uh, what separates you from other artists? Like, is there like a superpower you got? Because I feel like for me, when I'm making a beat, um, I got. Uh, something called synesthesia. Do you know what that is? No. It's like uh, I can uh, hear sounds and see colors and stuff. So like when I am making a beat and I got like a melody that I'm doing, I can like already like feel a vibe, feel a color. So how can I make this feel more of that color? You know, like uh, blue and purple are associated with more melodic, laid back. So if I hear something like like a melody that's like blue or purple, I can make the beat really laid back like that, you know? Yeah, you okay. Like yeah, that, or... I, feel, I, I feel that because sometimes I, I listen to sound like songs and I feel like, like I got some song, a song, a early song called Poison. Every time I, like it was, I was sort of guy, it was some girls and I was showing them and they was like, okay. She was like, what's a cover art idea? We was talking about like a cover art idea. And I said, I don't know. I just, whenever I hear the song, I think of green and nature. I just think of nature and green. Like, I told them that, and they was like, what? And I was like, I don't know. That just makes me think of green. It's a hyperbop. You know what hyperbop is? Yeah. Yeah, I got, 
I think that's really what separates me from other artists, especially in indie, like, or just Indiana in general. Like, I feel like I'm the most, if not one of the most versatile, like, actually versatile. Like, some people say, like, oh, yeah, versatile. They'll try other lanes and they'll be okay at it. But, like, I feel like I probably have a song out right now in every single genre that you could think of. Boom bap. Like, like a mainstream genre. Like oh, if you went, okay. like, like I ain't got like a rock and roll song, but like, I got like two hyper bop songs. I got a, uh, I got a, you know, like Skiller Baby, you know what that is? Like Detroit kind of. Like bow, bow, bow. You know that little bass sound that plays? Is that what you're talking about? There's like a uh, bass sound that is very specific. Oh, no, Grizzly? Yeah. Yeah, I got I got songs on like T Grizzly, Skiller, like, Okay, so T Grizzly has a joint album with Skilla Baby called Controversy. So like they got like certain type like Skilla Baby does like freestyle. So he's from Detroit, but they don't have like a Detroit beat. So I got songs on Skilla Baby beat, I got Hyperbop, I got Detroit beats, like actual Detroit songs. I got like true R and B, like some true R and B. I don't know if you've heard that. I got a few of those. Um, I performed that at an R and B party. Like it was an R and B only event. And I went and performed at those before. Um, I got songs like Dorn Freestyle, for instance. Like I got stuff like that. I got a uh, like. I feel like I got like verse versatility wise, especially in my files too, unreleased. Like it, people always laugh at me, like my teammates and stuff too, because they'll be like, uh, they be like, you need to make a song like this, and I'll be like, I already got one. They be like, no, you don't. And I'll be like, watch. Now, what was I saying though? Oh yeah, I was talking about versatility. Yes. Yeah, but, like, I feel like I'm actually, because I think it really started when I was younger and, like, how I, some people make music off the rip trying to do a certain sound, and I didn't really know a sound I wanted to do, so I was trying everything. Like, I was trying underground. I was trying, uh, like, I got them screaming songs. Like, when I said, like, earlier, like, they'll get on a crazy beat and then scream, like, I got songs like that. I got... Like, I literally have probably any song you could think of besides, like, a rock and roll, like, a t true rock and roll song. And that's just because, like, I really just, like, I just be having fun for real. So, like, and I know, like, I make songs situational. So, like, if it's, if I got a homie and he, like, nah, I drop a song and he, like, nah, I ain't really like that. I ain't gonna lie. That ain't my type of music. I'll be like, okay, what you listen to? Uh, Lil Durk. I right, bet. I'll go home and make a Lil Durk song. Like a song on a Lil Durk beat. And then I'll send it to him like, is this cool? And then normally people be like, oh yeah, that's like, that's hard. And I really, and I listen to so much different music that I'm normally able to like, you know what I mean? Kind of, not mimic, but like put my own twist onto it, but still sound decent. But like you'd have to, I mean, of course you'd have to go look for yourself and, uh, you know what I mean? So you get your own opinion on it. But personally, I feel like I'm one of the most versatile in probably the city. Like when it comes to like rapping and singing and then putting them together and doing both of them. Stuff like that. Some pretty bold words there. Yeah. Well, half the people in the city just diss each other for the most part. Like, because I know a lot of people in the city that rap and all they do is diss each other and talk about who killed who. I got more money than you. This is I. Like, y'all like steps and stuff and i don't diss like i don't really be dissing like that i like if i say something i like my music having meaning too like and whenever somebody texts me saying like yo like this song like help me get through this or something like that like them them text messages or dms that i get that be the best ones like when i hear stuff like that because i really do try to make music situational like songs like trust issues and dream chasing and need you like stuff like that people can relate to like, they can listen to it when they in their feelings. Like, if somebody break up with they, like, somebody get broken up with, they can turn my song on it. I was going to ask if you ever made any heartbreak songs. Yeah, that's, like, my main genre. That's my main. Uh, <laughs> you said that's my real. main stuff right there. Come on now. Right, yeah, that's my. <laughs> like, um, yeah, need you. That's what the whole Feelings to Ashes uh, EP was when I dropped that, what I was talking about earlier. That whole little EP was about that. My last EP I dropped last Christmas or uh, last um, 
Thanksgiving. It was last Thanksgiving. Um, it had like, it had a heartbreak song on there. It had a hyperbop song that was basically heartbreak. And then I had a song on a little baby beat. And it had a, like that, that really showed my, some diversity in there. You can listen to that EP and it'll show you some different stuff in there too. But like pain songs, I feel like that's my best thing. Like pain or heartbreak songs. Cause either I didn't been through a lot in my life. And then I got friends that have been through crazy amounts of stuff. So hearing stories of my stories and then putting them all into one. And then I could just, you know what I mean? Relate it to everybody. So a lot of your influence, I would say, comes from, uh, I'm guessing here, uh, partially it's it's like motivated. You know, you want to do that, you want to make these songs, and because, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, like empathy, sympathy, you got, you have that for your friends. Yeah. Like, and you want to do something that might make them, you know, feel better, like you said. Mm -hmm. Like, I want something like, like... The best feeling in the world, like as an artist, is like going somewhere and people like feeling you. Like you ever seen like a Rod Wave concert, like how he'll be on stage and it'll be all them thousands of people holding up their phones, singing all in unison, like they, like just feeling the music. And they be like, I've seen oh concerts my God. like that, yeah. Yeah, like that's be the best feeling. Like when I get in the car and my homies or something will be like, hey, play that one song, play that, play that one song. And like I'll play it. Or some, or they, I'll get in their car and they'll play it. I don't even ask them. They'll, they'll play it, and then they feeling it like they they hear the music. They singing the lyrics and they like actually feel the music. They be like, bro, you be talking to me, or like something like that. Like you be talking that real shit. Like shit. like that'd be the best feeling. I swear to God. Like I was at IU yesterday, and like there was girls like at a party talking about play this song, play this song, and they knew every lyric. Like they knew every whoa, lyric. And that's whoa, like, whoa. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like. When I go, and that's at a whole nother college. So, like, I go there places that, like, if I go somewhere and somebody recognize me, and they be like, yeah, that song you made, like, I, that, I really related to that or stuff. Like, like that'd be the best feeling ever. Like, when people can really hear you and either relate or just feel the music. And they not just listen to the beat. Like, they actually listen to the, what you're saying. Stuff like that. Like, that, that'd be the best feeling for me, personally. That, I think that builds more than your brand, too. When you make music like that, it builds more of a... Um... Like a connection. A connection, yeah. And it builds more of, uh, I guess, respect towards you as well. Yeah. Because they will follow you wherever you go. Yeah. Because, like, I don't, that's one thing, too. Like, I don't like to, like, cap, like, cap rap a lot. Like, if, if I say something in a song, normally, it's normally true. Like, you know what I mean? I don't be on there. Like, you'll never hear me. For, that's another thing, too. I ain't never cussed in a song. Like, me personally, I ain't never cussed in, in a, uh, like, a verse. Like, a feature might have cussed, but I've never once cussed. But I always get my point across. I want to do that, too. That's one of the things I want to be, want to be the one of the first artists to, like, bro, blow up without cussing. Like, because everybody cuss. Like, you ain't got to yeah. turn on a, yeah, you ain't got to turn on, like, a, um, what's it called? Like, a clean radio edit to my song. Like, you can just play one of my songs and boom unless i has a feature on it if i has a feature they might cuss but if it's a solo song you can just play it and ain't no nothing like that so like not needing a clean it. version to an original song opens up so many doors because it can be uh it can be used on commercials radio Literally. obviously uh sync licensing you can get on movies and yeah, tv yeah. shows you can get shit. I mean, it can even be played at middle schools, you know. Literally, like I swear, they play my music in like practicing before our games. Like if we got a football game or like before practice or something, we'll be warming up at practice and I play my stuff just because they know it ain't got no cussing in it, and the team be knowing it. Like my teammates will be singing it. Like while we warming up and stuff, they'd be bumping their head to it. You know what you need to so make like next? That. What? An anthem. An anthem. An anthem. That's for what. A stadium. That's like a like a sports stadium. Yeah, yeah. Or like, yeah. I need. I, I do need something catchy. I tried to get on that wave like last. When was that? Probably last Christmassy, around that time. I dropped a song called After Party. I dropped it at Christmas, playing it. I, I was hoping it would blow up, and like by spring break, everybody would be knowing it. 
but I mean, a good amount of people know it, but it's called After Party. It's like a straight party song. Like, it's a, it's a really storytelling song. During that time of my music, I was telling a lot of stories and stuff. So, like, the chorus was, like, basically a story. Like, it was like a party. Like, literally, like, it was talking about, like, a college party. Like, you go to the party, boom, uh, somebody in over there, drunk, passed out, throwing up. Dude over here doing this drug and that drug. Doing that girl over the there or some shit. Yeah, oh, you you've heard it. Yeah, yeah. So um, and then like in the verse, I start talking about like talking to a girl, got her da 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 da, like stuff like that. Like, like I was trying to get into that, like more catchy music and stuff. But I need to get back into that. I got a part two that some people's been asking me to drop. I, I need a cover art for that. And I'm gonna drop that one too. It's not yeah, bad to have catchy two. songs either. I mean. There can be no meaning behind a song. Sometimes a song can just be a song, you know. Just listen to it; it makes you feel good. But the catchiness yeah, and the like, what's up? Go ahead. Like a chorus, this like an anthem, like a catchy, yeah, yeah. Like like sexy red and all them that be coming out with these songs. That's like just catchy, but like it's like an anthem for all the girls. Like they all, all just love. Oh, like WAP almost. Yeah, like stuff like that, <laughs> like. Yeah, I hate that song. I've heard it so many fucking times. I can't tell you That's how many a, times. Yeah, but like if I made something like that and everybody was just playing it, like that, that would be hard. But I have to make one for the guys. I couldn't make a girl anthem. I have to make one for the guys. What would be a guy anthem? That's yeah. I don't know. I'd have to think of something like like beer pong or something involved with that, and yeah, something like that. Something They're like along those lines. remix, like one of them songs. Or something like like low key remix the beat and then just put my own words on it. That probably people probably listen to that. And do something like that, yeah. I got a question for you here. I wrote down. It's a good. It's it's a good question. It's geared towards more uh, the time I was a senior graduating high school. But if right. it's, uh, let's see, uh, I'm trying to think of how old you were at this time. 2016, 2017. How old were you then? Uh, probably around 14, 13-ish. 13, 13, 14. So you're about in 8th grade? 2016, 17? Yeah. Yeah, I was 8th grade, I'm pretty sure. 8th grade or 7th grade, one of the two. 8th grade, 7th grade. So, yeah. Okay, so here's the question. It's, uh, compared to 2016, how, uh, how different is the music versus today? And... Personally, I think that 2016, 2017 was um, uh, trap music's introduction to uh, the mainstream sound when those sounds uh, started charting, because that was during the SoundCloud era as well. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure we listen to the same songs, but is there something that really stuck out for you during that time frame that, of music? That was like bad and bougie area, right? Uh, for me, it started, um, Broccoli, Little Yachty. Yeah, okay, yeah, that yeah, Chill, in front of D to the A, and, uh, yeah. And XXX and Toss Young came out, uh, yeah. on me. look on me, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. That's, okay, yeah, that top period was lit. That was played on my prom, too, so I was, like, kind of crazy about that. Yeah, so, I feel like, I'm not gonna lie, I feel like how you said there's a lot of anthems, I feel like back then it was a lot of... I feel like the radio was more prominent back then. Like, it was a lot of records. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know, nowadays, like, 2016, I mean, you get in the car and turn on Apple Music, but I feel like a lot of times, like, I get in the car with people and we'd be like, yeah, turn on 96.3. Like, it was, like, we turn on a radio station and they would play all those songs. And that's how I feel like we knew them. But, the, I mean, we, we would have found them regardless. But I feel like now, like, if you, I mean, if you got to, a song on the radio I don't know maybe it's just me and the people I be around but I feel like now it's like more TikTok Instagram TikTok and songs just, yeah it's a lot of TikTok yeah, like, songs like if, if your song blow up on TikTok Instagram people will go and search you up on Apple Music or search you up on Spotify and just add it to a playlist and play I feel like music now is more playlist than radio I guess I feel like that's probably the biggest difference between music now and then. I think, too, uh, songs have gotten shorter, so I think that 
Yeah, that the too. playlist music that you're talking about, it's uh, it's geared towards more um, obviously, you know, the young kids, because there's always gonna be the same kids that were our age in school. They're always gonna be there, so it's yeah. gonna hit their dopamine levels and like just be like, oh, play that song, play that song, play that song, plays, plays, yeah, plays, play. plays. Yeah. And that's just how it uh, has gotten, I guess, worse throughout the years. Worse as in like shorter songs and uh, availability to access that. Yeah, and like less, I feel like, you know, because uh, yeah. every kid I feel has like a phone. Now, okay, that's one thing too. Now I feel like some songs nowadays, like especially with uh, uh, some underground stuff. Um, Songs are more ad libs now than than verse. Sometimes I, I hear that, like it'll be like, like a a hard ass beat. Somebody will say a few words, and they have like a whole bunch of ad libs or like effects in the background that like will really make the song. And like you might not understand like one word he's saying, but it just sound good. I feel like back then it was more. It wasn't that like people said a little bit of something, <laughs> and even if they didn't say nothing crazy, you could still kind of understand them. I feel like mumble rap wasn't like a crazy, crazy thing back then. It's not then. to where it's at nowadays. That's for yeah, sure. for sure. Yeah. It's a, especially with um, my side of the thing, we're making the beats, man. Like, it's there's there's so much competition, especially as an artist and as a beat maker. There's so yeah. many people doing it now more nowadays. Yeah, I feel like that's that's something too. Back then, everybody wasn't trying, and now everybody's trying to be an artist. It's so it's saturated. Like, some people is like, yeah, I don't like. People ask me all the time, like, "Yo, let's make a song," and I'll be like, "I right. like back, like like I said last year when we made like doing freestyle and stuff like that. Like, I wasn't really taking it as serious. Like, I didn't take it serious till probably Thanksgiving when I dropped the Timeless EP. And that's when I really was like, I'm about, I'm an artist. Like, I'm, I'm switching." So I'm an artist. I gotta think like an artist. I can't just think like somebody to make music. So like, I don't really get mad when people ask me like, "Yo, let's get a song. Like, let's make a song or something." But like, I just be like, "Eh." Like, I just kind of brush it off because I'm like, "You're not really, like, you're not a real artist. Like, I'm not about to, you know what I mean?" So what work. defines a real artist? Like, if in, you really like your opinion, at least. Like, like in what, my opinion, yeah. If you actually like. Like, if you're just a random teammate on my football team that's like, yo, like, I don't really rap, but, like, I don't know. You don't I'm get trying the time to, like, of day. Yeah, like, like, you just, hey, like, let's, let's just, uh, let's go freestyle and record it. Like, like, that, like, I mean, it's cool. Like, if you catch me on the right day, I'll be like, all right, bro, come on. So, like, relating back like, to what happened to you, though. The guy kind of got you into it. Yeah. So who's not then, to say like, you can't do that to somebody else? Yeah, that's what like, I did with Keegan and Ray and them. Like when we made that one song, uh, Dorn Freestyle, and stuff like that. Like, I got a few songs with people. I got songs with girls that like, like I just messing around with them. But like, if they see if, if I, okay, I'll say this. Say you come to me and you like, I think it's the way you approach me. Like if you approach me like on some, yo, like let's, let's freestyle tonight and record something. Like, ha, 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 like, joking or something, I'll be like, I just kind of brush it off. And then people will come back like, we ain't never make our song. And I'll be like, the way you approach me, like, I ain't think you was, like, you know what I mean? But if you, you really, like. You thought they are making fun of you? Not even making fun of me, but, like, they just, they bullshit. Like, they, they, go, they gonna do it if I tell them, come on, they gonna do it. But it's it's not ever gonna get dropped. It's never gonna be released. It's, it's just gonna be sitting in the files, time that we wasted. Like, we. You know what I mean? It's part of building your credibility and, you know, actually having some uh, credentials to back you up and some songs you made. Some You, you got to come right. You know, you got to come prepared. Yeah. Like, and then if we make the song and they like, well, you ain't drop it yet. Like, that's not like I'm a real, like, you're not going to make a random song with Drake and ask him to drop it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if, if like, I'm not like a, like, I'm, I'm trying to be a real artist. So I'm not trying to drop a song that I know is not going to help me. It's, it'll hurt me. But, like, if you really come to me and you like, yo, like, I kind of, like, I've been writing a little bit. I've been doing it. It's like, I really want to get into the music. I'll be like, all right, bet. Like, I got, like, my sweet mates, like, in my dorm. It's like, 
a dorm bathroom suite. It's suite mates over there. They know I make music. They came over here when we first moved in. It was like, yo, like we trying to get into music, like producing, beat making, this and that. The way they approached me, I was like, oh, okay, y'all actually for real. Like y'all serious. And they'll ask me, and they'll do it on their own. Like they'll, they'll, I'll hear them in there trying to make a beat, and then they'll call me like, yo trying to help me do this and i'm like yeah let me let me hear all right yeah try this do 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 and stuff like that like i know they actually serious like i can okay yeah we can make a song like we can try something we can you know what i mean but if you just like trying to just make a song just for the fun of it like i mean if you want to pay for a studio session we can go do that i ain't tripping but like i'm not about to record you myself take my time out and stuff like that for like it ain't, ain't gonna bring us no game like none like it's just time waster. I feel like, to me personally, it might seem like that at the same time. I thought a lot of because I used to run a studio out of my bedroom. My closet used to be the recording booth and stuff. Yeah, but, uh, that was a Were they paying ago. you though? Huh? Would they pay uh, you? Um, it depends. If I knew them, I wouldn't charge them. But a lot of people would hit me up. I didn't know them, so I charge them. Yeah. So like, yeah, like I feel like if I charge you. All right, yeah, we could do something. Like, if you a random, then no good and well, you don't make music. You're not going to make music. And then sometimes, like, I used to be like, yeah, all right, we can record something. We'd well, record for, like, a few seconds or a few lines, and they'd be like, dang, this is harder than I thought it was. Uh-huh. Nah, I don't really want to do it. And then they'll just stop. And then I'm just like, bro, see how you waste. Like, I could be doing something else. So then after that, I was like, yeah. If you don't, if you don't approach me really, really trying to do something, like, I don't really just, yeah. That's pretty fair to say, Yeah. Yeah. It's just time wasted before in my past that I just don't feel like dealing with no more. Like, if you ain't really trying to elevate with it, then I ain't, I'm trying to go somewhere with it, I guess. You know what I mean? I know personally, uh, I've been making beats pretty much. I, you know, not every day. I'm not perfect, but almost every day, um, I've been working, putting in work, learning new techniques, right? Uh, new beats, new whatever. No, you're good. New techniques and just getting knowledge in. But the people that were hitting me up, actually trying to do some stuff, mm-hmm. that's the only time they ever did anything. Yeah, yeah, like they don't put nice. Yeah, like oh yeah, that's how I be feeling. I got so much like, cause I pretty much strictly make beats. I can do it all, but I just make beats. So much knowledge is in here, experiences, where I would love to share it with someone that's serious, but yeah, I haven't come across anybody that actually wants to learn. Yeah, I'm like that's one thing with me and the Rello, the Army and Rello do, cause he said a lot of people do that with him and stuff but when we tapped in like i, I dm'd him because i ain't gonna lie like, he was one of my favorite rappers like regardless he from indiana from indy like regardless how big or small he was i've been listening to him since my sophomore year of high school i probably know every song that he's dropped since then <laughs> like i'd be like you know how people listen to young boy die hard like i don't know why it's just his flow and the way he rapped like i just messed with heavy and then when he like hit me up like yo like you hard da, da, da. i'm like what and then we went to the studio together and stuff like he realized I was actually serious and like the way we was talking like he could tell I really fucked with his music he really messed with mine and we're, like when we were just working like it was just working like he'll call me randomly like hey this song hard da, 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 da. or like show me some of his stuff or something so and, like he would just been te- thinking about him he is someone that can uh he's, he's like a mentor and he can actually build you up you want to learn yeah and stuff. yeah and i and i'm not somebody that's like a nah i don't think i should do that like i really like i add like hey like what do you think i should do or something like that and he'll like tell me and i'm okay bet and he like really been giving me like gems when it comes to like the industry and stuff like that but that's like a mentor right there yeah for real and like he he told me before like other some people did whatever and he had to like fend me back up off of and I like feeling because I didn't same thing that happened to me, but it's probably happened to him more. He bigger than me and everything. But like, but I want to be around people when, with music that's on the same path as me. Like really want to grow and elevate and get better every day. Like it's, you know what I mean. You ain't. I mean you'll get lucky and 
drop a song and boom, get a million views out of nowhere and you all like but that ain't real like it's not realistic. Like it, it won't happen every time. So like you know sometimes I, you just I gotta pray go pray that some like a one hit wonder does not happen to me. I do not want a one hit wonder. You don't? No. Hell no. I do not. Cause yeah. look at Black Boy J B, Drake, that song. Whatever yeah, for real. Doing, like, um, that's that's one thing I'm talking about though. Like when it comes like versatility, like he not versatile. Like Black Boy J B had one song, one flow, that was it. You ain't heard nothing else from him. I guess so, you like, can say the same about the baby though. Yeah, the baby. I stopped listening to him too, cause he he ain't got no flow. I heard like three but, songs from him, and I just like I was like, dude, it's the same thing over and yeah. over. People, people were like, no, nah, you're That's crazy, the- dude. Months later, they're like telling me all he raps is the same flow over and over i was like dude i told you that man yeah like that's when like i feel like that's one thing about um like i mean sometimes you can have the same flow or a similar flow and still make it like little baby for instance i mean he he switches his flow up and stuff but he ain't really came out with no r&b song or like an underground rap song or nothing like that yeah that's not his target audience though at the same time yeah he he stays on his audience but like he still switches it up enough and he's just so hard that people gonna listen to him regardless but like i feel like artists that really shows like diversity like young boy like i'm listening to young boy since 2016 and he come out with a new flow every like project like like he got one project that's straight underground music he got another project where like you know, like he, he dropped crazy amount of projects in the past year. Like I ain't even been able to listen to every, like keep up with everything. I think he dropped like, like he, what, like eight or something in like twenty nineteen, yeah, like, or something like that. Twenty twenty one, I didn't think it was eight. I think that was like, he year. dropped, yeah, yeah, like he, like, but he's so versatile that he can do stuff like that, and people won't get tired of it because it's all different. So I feel like. That's one thing. Like, if you do hit get a one hit wonder, but you versatile, I feel like it could work out. Like, cause you can boom one hit wonder, boom, you get all, all this target audience. Like, dang, that's hard. You drop another song similar to that, keep them around. Then you drop a whole another type of flow. Damn. If it's good, I mean, if you if you talented and it's good, they are gonna be like, oh snap, this okay, this actually it's decent. decent. It ain't my yeah, like it ain't my type of flow, but. It's damn near hard. Hold on, let me. And then people hear you out, and then you can build off of that. But like, so like if you one hit wonder with one flow, it'll. I mean, you'll be cool for like a few months. You'll be popping or whatever. But like, who's that one dude that had that one weird haircut uh, that blew up off TikTok? You? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, <Nah. laughs> he was. Who was he? Uh, who was uh? Like the. Uh, yeah, he had that like. He had like he was in the microphone. I'm an, oh, oh, that song, Mama. You raised a gangster. I'm a so yeah. That guy. That, like, like he dropped one song. Like, like he dropped one song, and then that was it. Like we ain't heard him since. He, I think he in jail now. Like, oh, no cap. I, was, I think he shot like his producer or something. <laughs> some st- he oh, did something dumb. Fuck? Like, he had one song, and that was it. But he had no other flow. Like, I, because I checked him out. I'm like, dang. Like, did he just blow up, or was he? And I went to his TikTok, and I went to his YouTube. He had, like, 1.2K, 2K, a million. TikTok. Like, the next video. And then he didn't drop nothing else. And it's like, I mean, he didn't really grow a fan base. Like, you know, I don't know. I got like, a if I segment. ever get. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, no, go ahead. I got a little segment that I want to jump into here. It's uh, overrated, underrated, rated. I got a few topics. I got six things that you, that you can rate overrated, underrated, or just rated. Right. You ready? Yeah. First thing, mainstream songs. Overrated. Like a motherfucker. To me, personally. Like, I ain't gonna lie, you get in the car with me, we not listening to no mainstream for real. I mean, we'll, we'll have a few songs, but, like, I'm not getting in the car playing Uzi. Like, that's just me, though. That's just me personally. Like, I mean, I, I mess with Uzi. I know Uzi music, this and that, but, like, I feel like... Old Uzi's good. I don't know about this new one. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, 
feel like right now, like artists that's mainstream as of right now are not the same that they, I feel like all the mainstream artists right now are artists from 2017, 18, 16 almost too. Like how you said, like the Migos and them that are trying to keep, like they, try, they it's almost like they, how do I, I don't want to say, like they holding on by a string. Like they not the same as they was back then. Like you. No, like, but they're solidified though. Yeah, like they solid. They got a fan base that they know they can like. I like some like Uzi could drop the worst bullshit ever, and he'd still still get numbers just because he Uzi. Like you know, like Playboy Cardi. I can't listen to him no more. Like I can't. I don't. I'm not playing Playboy. But I can't play none yeah, of that. I don't know like, about that one. About Playboy. That's you listen to Playboy? Hell no. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I hell can't no. like. Like old Playboy, Mac Magnolia, like in New York, I'm Millie Rock, uh, like stuff like that. Like, I'm, oh yeah, play that, P turn it on. Da -da -da. Now it's like, oh yeah, I'm finna play Playboy. No, stop. Like don't. Like I feel like now it's like they, they not even really trying to elevate themselves. Now they just trying to stay afloat. Like you feel me? And then all the dudes in the underground are like, that ain't got as much pub. They really making quality music because they know they got to to stay relevant or they got to do that to try and elevate themselves. So I listen to like indie rappers or rappers from like just low key rappers like YSN Flow. He hard. But he he got a independent fan. I don't know if you know that is. He got an independent fan base. He drops himself and he stays consistent because he knows like he not mainstream. Like he not he can't just drop bullshit and he'll lose fans. Yeah. Some rappers and drop bullshit and not lose nothing. Like, young boy could drop the worst song in the history of the world, and ain't nobody gonna stop listening to him. <laughs> like, nobody's gonna stop, like... Next part getting into this, not... uh, overrated, underrated, uh, Chipotle. Chipotle? Yeah. I got Chipotle right here. My, uh, hey, my room, my rated, looked at underrated. You said, no, overrated. No cap. To me, I'm going to say why, though. I'm a queso lover. I like queso. Queso's good. I, go I like to, queso. Like, I like Qdoba over Chipotle any day, in number my three. opinion. Cause... Number go three. ahead. Though. Go yeah. ahead. Uh, buying new equipment versus when your current equipment works. Keep your current equipment. Boom. I like it. That's what I say. Because, like, well, I take that back. If you got the funds to get the new equipment get and you can just go do it, go get it. But, like, if you trying to break your back to, like, get new equipment and stuff like that, like, I don't think you need, like, you know, look, like, you know what Tyler is, right? No. Look, Tyler, he a rapper that he's almost mainstream now. He blew up off of Band Lab. I'm, not, I'm sure you know what Band Lab is. Yeah. Like, blew up off Band Lab. Like, you can make something. Like, I make half of my songs are on Band Lab. But no one would know because I just learned how to edit it on my computer to where it sounds like a studio. That's so my like, next thing like, I want to get into right here: uh, Pro Tools or DAWs, like uh, whatever DAW you use. Like I think I use FL. I think FL is rated perfectly fine, not under, not over. It's the perfect to be making software or whatever else you want to do in that thing. What so if that? I'm, honestly, I don't use neat. Well, I guess I use a DAW. I use BandLab. Everything. That's a doll. I mastered it. Like, so, so where's Band Labs at? Band Lab. Yeah, I swear to God, if Band Lab, like, if I make a studio, in my like, say I say I drop a song tomorrow, boom, it blow up, boom. I swear to God, and I get hella money. Like, I sign a deal and everything, and I build a studio in my house. I'm calling Band Labs organiz. Like, I'm getting to Band Labs top head person, and I want a custom studio with band lab like like no cap like i didn't i've been using band lab since high school and like the way i've been able to just like i said i got 600 songs or something like that so like i've worked on 600 different projects in band lab edited them on my computer so i didn't figure out how to really do like all the eqs and compressors that's Master. all on i've literally yeah like that's not like the only difference between band lab and fl studios and stuff i feel like is you can just hook up like microphones better to it and stuff like that. Like it's more, yeah. it's 
like it's more professional, I guess. But like the auto, like if you know how to work band lab, you can make it sound just like studio. Like I got songs yeah. with other. I got a buddy that uses that. Yeah, number, I got a number five with... getting into it though. Uh, summertime or the heat that comes with summertime is that most people prefer cold. So I don't know if that's summer's overrated or where's that. I like summer. I like I, I like summer. I don't like the cold. I, I like summertime too. Yeah, I don't like the cold at all. You can all. do things outside like... all summer. Literally, I'll be outside. Uh, if it's cold, I ain't coming outside. I, 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 I. And the last thing I want to get to on this one is overrated, underrated, rated, making music nowadays. I think it's rated because everyone's doing it. Yeah, I think it's like, I want to say overrated or underrated. I feel like, I mean, it, it all depends on you, like... If you're making it for like the right reasons, like I feel like it's just it all depends on what you're doing. Like if you're trying to make music just to get famous and blow up, like I feel like that's overrated. Like you probably isn't probably not gonna happen. If we going off statistics, but like like if I make music right now and I keep the same same fan base I got till I die, I'm gonna keep dropping and keep making music just because I love it. And the few people or the little fan base I got fuck with me and they fuck with what i'm saying like i said i went to iu and some girls knew lyrics but like i'm gonna keep going just for them people and for myself to like so you're gonna be like I'm joe like, biden up in the studio <laughs> yeah so they out here family up there recording uh, but yeah like i feel like it's really up to you your personal vendetta or whatever like what you got what you trying to get to i hear you there I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up here, man. It was uh, if you want to talk more after, I'm I'm done talking more. But um, for this for the podcast sake, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up, right. Mr. Avery. So, what would you um, how would you rate this experience? Like the podcast or just music? Just uh, the overall conversation. Oh, the podcast was cool for sure. I'd do it again for sure. Being able to like really talk about music, somebody that actually understands it is cool. Like normally, you say stuff people don't be doing; they'd be just looking at you like, "What?" Oh like, yeah, they'd be like just itching to get out of the conversation, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that or like they don't even know what you're talking about half the stuff. Like if we said like a doll, like how you talking about dolls and Pro Tools, like you you ask somebody else that question, like, what the fuck is that? You know what I mean? Like hey, hey, being able to actually talk to somebody to know what they talking about, yeah, that was cool. It was a good conversation, I have to say so myself. It was nice talking to you there, Avery. So you too. Hey guys, um, if you guys like the video, drop a comment, leave a like, subscribe. Uh, if you want to be featured on the podcast, uh, on the podcast, on the podcast, go ahead and contact me on t on Instagram at Johan. And without further ado, guys, Johan and Avery are signing off. Peace. Catch See you guys later, man. Yep.